Hi guys and welcome back. Nighttime clash at St James Park. Newcastle United taking on Everton in a game where I'm quite confident. Again, I said this before the West Ham game. I'm looking forward to these matches now. Newcastle will back into the floor of things. Do have a bit of a concern for this one, uh, and that being the bench. Uh, we've seen the bench already. Willock is the only good sub. The rest of them, bunch of kids and players that, to be brutally honest, I'm not expecting the kind of come on and change the game. But that's our, our issue with the injuries this season. We've got 12 players out for this game. Well, that's more than half the club out for this match. And it's been months since we went out of European competition as well, so still a concern. But on the pitch, though, we should be beating Everton. No excuses at all. A team that has been awful form wise. Of, haven't won less than one or so in the last 12 games. I've got a horrific form. At St James's Park, uh, I would argue a bit of a banana skin team, a team that is capable of taking points on for Newcastle. You've got to be professional, go out there, don't underestimate them, go out and just hopefully and put them on. I want to see a convincing, easy performance, but it's never easy sport in this football club. And even though we've got a great win against West Ham, had to work hard for it. So I'm hoping it's not as bad today in that sense. John Pickford, of course, just makes this game a derby for whatever reason and Newcastle fans always have that back and forth between them so they always got that kind of going around the back one as well just, I never understand this Newcastle Everton rivalry thing we kind of seem to hate each other even though there's not really anything there it's just the, the Pickford Sunderland background but of course, uh, because of that, and I remember him quite well at Goodison Park celebrating right in front of our players and in front of our fans as well as today we want to get one back up over. The yeah, up the mags. We want to get one back over Pickford today. So hopefully we get the job done. Should be three points in my opinion. We get less than three tonight. I'll be brutally disappointed. So up to us to turn up. Do I think we can do that? Of course I do. Uh, so at the start of the week has to be at least seven out of nine points. We win today. At least one point against Fulham and we're there. So uh, let's get in there. Up the Jordies. Up the Jordies indeed. <laughs> but I, I'm going to back us to win 2-1 today. I think it'll be a narrow game. But I'm expecting the castle to get one over them. How are the mag? Alright lads, Jordy Joshua. Tip for the game today, do you know what it is surprising? I've seen some people say they're not confident for this game. For me personally, I am very, very confident. No wins in 12 for Evan. I think they've picked up seven losses as well. That is kind of worrying for Newcastle. We seem to have a banana slip for these sort of teams, but some good individual quality there from Evan. Jared Brantwaite, very good centre back. Amadou Anana, some very good players in there. But I do believe Newcastle will get the job done. 3 1 today. I think we will concede the defence has been pretty leaky recently, but we will get the job done. Hello guys, it's Jason Chalmers on TikTok, and to be honest, I'm a complete opposite to Josh. I'm a very pessimistic fan, and I'm going to go for my usual score prediction of one all. I think there's obviously a lot of injuries today, it's going to be a bit of a makeshift back four. I'm predicting it will be Hall at left back, yeah, but I'm hoping Tibia makes the cut today, but I'm not very confident overall, and I do think one all, I think better is going to get a goal late for them. Fingers crossed we get the job done, but as I said, I'm a bit of a pessimistic fan, and um, yeah, a little bit worried. Got to talk about the last time I played Everton as well, of course, it was December. I think it was a Thursday, I remember correctly, it was just a horrible time down there. And of course, as you see every time I play Everton, there's always something Pickford related involved. And there's this weird derby feeling up towards Everton. I never understand this game why it kind of feels like a derby, but uh, obviously for Pickford, he took the absolute mick out of us last time. He was in Bruno's face, he was giving it quite a big one. So uh, obviously something in the back of our minds today for sure, but... Uh, I take it, your lines are probably expecting someone to be related with him during the game. Something, well, I mean, look at the moments we've had with him. We've had that 3 2 comeback at St James's Park. We've had the Lejeune game where he was absolutely forming. Something will happen. I think we'll be on the receiving end of this one where we actually will have a uh, positive against Jordan Pickford this time. What I'm concerned about is obviously if, if Dyke's coming here with the game plan, sitting deep and frustrating, obviously us, and we're going to look to play on the front foot tonight. Pickford might be a shit house and constantly go down with the ball like he did in that away game because he was taking the best last time so you might see a lot of that especially just no no one all late on in the game and just trying to like um you could say interrupt our rhythm so i'm a bit concerned about that but hopefully pickford is uh, a rubbish site fingers crossed yes, sir. Okay. and what were you thinking for the score against everton today three one two Oh, 
Wasn't saving that one, pick fight. Made a good save earlier. Never getting that. Come on. Get well. Well. First draw of the game here at St. James's Park 4, Newcastle United. Your goal scorer, number 14, Alexander Lewis. Come on. Who put the ball in the Mackin's net? Who put the ball in the Mackin's net? Who put the ball in the Mackin's net? Alexander Eza. I warned you, boy. You ain't stopping up. Not a great half, but not so far. Desperately need a second goal this time. Sums up, battered him and have scored a pen. Oh, they've picked us on a counter attack here. Come on, get at them. Get forward. Kind of deal with this team today. Plus, Bruno. Oh, we're always going to fall.
I get past her? Can I get down there or? What did you think about the game today? Uh, I thought we started well, um, getting an early goal, and uh, I thought it was a bit rubbish bringing Longstaff on, uh, keeping Longstaff on, and bringing Anderson off. Because uh, I thought Longstaff was poor. I would have kept Anderson on, swapped him for Willis. Ah, it's just stupid that we've lost. But, uh, yeah. As much as I didn't want to say, um, I thought Pickford was probably their best player today. Made some good saves, kept them in at one 0 and then obviously Dumbass made a stupid mistake. Yeah. Yeah, none, of their, uh, none of their players were outstanding anyway, so I thought we should have won a 3-0 maybe. But, yeah. Obviously, yeah, the fans celebrated the 1-1 one -one quite a lot, didn't they? Honestly, mate, honestly, up there, all the way up there, we've all just been fucking... I've had a good glass bottle of off my leg, but that's the way it goes. Right, sorry, well, uh, I said at the start of the week, if we get seven points next three games, be alright. So we still beat Fulham. Uh, West Ham drew anyway, so uh, results wise in the league hasn't made a, a massive disaster on Newcastle's season. But uh, <laughs> against Fulham, what, what would you change about that? Uh, I'd definitely start Anderson. And then maybe just. I'd uh, start Willick, start Anderson, start Bruno. And maybe just keep, keep the front three the same. But, uh, Dan Byrne is a centre back. I thought he was great to be fair. I thought Dan uh, Byrne was really good. Stepped up to being a captain as well. So. But there we have it. Full time for the St James Park. The Castanet 1, Everton 1. I thought two players were the reason why the Castle did not win the day. Paul Dummett and Jordan Pickford. Now, I'm not going to put all the blame on Paul Dummett. Paul Dummett was the reason why we conceded the goal, but he was most definitely the reason why we did not score a second. We had chances, didn't take, and Pickford had a great game. Probably my man of the match, kept everything in it, and they got themselves. I wouldn't say a deserved point, but they got themselves a point that is going to help them towards their eradication battle. I don't see them going down regardless. They could have lost 6 now tonight, and I still think Everton are, are going to stay up. It's just the quality in the league now. But the Castle... Bitterly disappointed. Now, I said at the start of the week, West Ham game, we had to get at least seven points this week. So if we beat Fulham, then we still got the seven points of my initial target. Should have won that game, though. We've had chances. And I felt like uh, the lack of subs that we had was the key indicator why we didn't win the game. Even the actual start 11, if you look at the likes of Tabraga, Kraft, Murphy, Longstaff, um, Burn. You put all of these players together into one team. Now, two or three is not a battle when you're playing five or six of these players that I think should be rotation-based. Yeah, you're not going to win many games because we just aren't that good. Um, and that was the key issue. We've got 12 players missing tonight. And it felt like we had 12 players missing tonight. The bench was awful. The start 11 was just a, a team that I think is a mid-table team. That start 11, when you look at it, we've got some class players in there like the Bruno Isak. But not much else there, and that was just so frustrating to see. I don't think it was a disastrous performance. I thought Newcastle done enough to win the game, and I think on an hard day, you probably are going to win the game, but I'm bitterly disappointed when I look back at that now. Uh, missed points again. How many times have I said that this season? How many games have we seen this season as well? Newcastle lacking the subs, and it's a, a key factor of why we haven't been able to uh, win key important games. I don't know why he's trying to park on me there. But yeah, ah. Uh, just on the topic of this, by the way, so I had a little walk down actually uh, up Barrick Road after the game. Um, there's always going to be a bit of a common theme this season whenever Newcastle win a game or if something bad happens, the opposition seems a bit pain in your face. Uh, there always seems to be fans bother up here. And from what I've seen tonight, I've got to be honest, I thought Newcastle fans are probably the, the aggressors in this situation, a lot of the kind of lurking around, trying to find gaps, trying to find ways of trying to Everton fans. And when the fans actually segregate together, and Newcastle fans all of a sudden just stop chanting, and then they start chanting again when the gap's there. So, um, obviously, there's always going to be people on both sides that are going to look for trouble, and that's the same with any football team. But I thought tonight Newcastle fans uh, went looking for trouble, which, considering the fact we drew 1-1, one, one, you could you could argue in our point if you was a bit embarrassing to, to drop the two points in the way we did. Uh, strange though, uh, I don't know why people kind of do that, but I thought we'll, we'll let you know and show you, the, the, I guess, the authentic content of what actually happens after the match behind the, behind the corner of the ground. 
But yeah, um, it doesn't matter about the fans. I'm not here uh, for that. I mean, I'm here to talk about the game and I'm bitterly disappointed. Uh, that's how I look at it. We come back against Fulham, win against Fulham, and that's the, that's the target I've set this week. So I don't think it's a disaster. I still think European football is on. If we lost again, I would have said otherwise. But uh, it's a point in a match where Paul Dummett and Jordan Pickard were the two reasons why I thought Newcastle didn't win the game. Uh, what is he doing for that pen? God, I, I love Dummett, sound guy, but he's, he's just holding the, he's holding the effort player. There's no reason to do that, and you can't do that with VR. He's, he's holding the play. It's such a blatant pen. What is he doing? But yeah, take care guys, let me know your thoughts and we'll see you all in the next one.